So in this video, I've got for you another interoperability solution that will most likely have a token in the future, which is Hyperlane. And they have a really good founding of almost $20 million. And this is going to be a very simple step-by-step -step tutorial, so it's going to be very easy to follow. So one of these protocols is used Nexus, which is essentially sort of like Stargate for layer zero. So in this case, we have Nexus for Hyperlane. So in this case, you can bridge Celestia from Celestia network to Neutron to Manta or Arbitrum. So let's say you, you need some funds on Arbitrum network. To do that, you can use another protocol called DBridge. So I showed you guys in my previous video how you can do it. It's very simple. You just need to connect your wallet and then bridge your funds from one network to another one. But that just in case you want to have some funds on Arbitrum, let's say. So to do that, you need to have a Kepler wallet. So you want to go to connect to website and then you want to select the Cosmos. And now we're going to select the Kepler. Then you can click on your wallet again and you can connect another wallet and we're going to connect Ethereum. So let's connect MetaMask. So now we have two wallets connected so you can send your funds between these chains. So next, if you open your Kepler wallet, you'll see that we, I have some Celestia already in here. So we have two Celestia. So I'm going to send one just to test it out. So select the amount that you want to send and then you want to copy your EVM address and click on continue. And it's going to cost us 0.27 TIA. There's not the most efficient way to just send one. If you're willing to, you know, spend a few dollars for a transaction, it's just better to send more in terms of the amount that you're sending because you want to create as much volume as possible. So now your Kepler is going to pop up, so you need to click on that proof. So now let me show you how you can send your Celestia from Arbitrum and we're going to send it over to Neutron. So as you can see, we have one Celestia that we previously sent. So first, you'll need to add your Neutron network to your Kepler wallet. And the way how you do it, you open your Kepler wallet and you want to click on the settings cog. And then you want to go to uh, general, you want to scroll down and find the manage chain visibility. And here you want to search for neutrons, so just select that and click on the save. So now you've done that, so what you want to do is to click on the TIA, you want to click on IBC send, and then you want to select the neutron network, and we're going to send, let's say, 0.5 TIA. So you want to click on the next and then approve. So once you added it, what you want to do is to send the TIA from Arbitrum to neutron. So you'll need to get the recipient address and the way how you do it, you click on your wallet and then you have your neutral address that you previously connected to the website. So click on that, it's going to copy it to your clipboard and then you want to just paste that in there and click on continue. And now we're going to pay a small fee from Arbitrum to Neutron and that's why I told you about the D-Bridge because you'll need to have a little bit of Ethereum or Arbitrum network to pay for the transactions. And now if you open your wallet, you'll see that we have our TIA on Neutron network. So we have 1.5 with this amount that we sent previously for the gas. So now you can either send it back or you can send it further to Manta Network. So if you have any balance on Manta Chain, you can do that. And later on, you can send it back to Arbitrum. So for now, I'm going to send it back. So I'm going to send 1.2 to my EVM address. So the next step, we'll need to go to Trader Joe XYZ. And here we're going to provide some liquidity. So you'll need to select for TIA and also Ethereum pair. And we're going to provide it to the first one. And we're going to provide one TIA. And also we can provide some small amount of Ethereum. Um, I'm just going to leave it default and I'm going to approve the TR and then we're going to add liquidity. So you can leave it there for a week. If you want to remove it later, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to keep it for a while, maybe towards the airdrop because, you know, providing liquidity also matter. And I think it will be one of these criteria that will be very beneficial. So the next protocol we want to use is Merkley and we're going to be using the Hyperlane technology. So let's mint this NFT. And to mint that is going to cost us 50 cent. And once you're going to mint that, you will need to bridge it over to Celo. And you can carry on with that. You can make a couple transactions. So you can do it from Arbitrum to Optimism, from other networks. So it doesn't really matter which one you're going to choose. You just want to use this feature. The more transactions you will make in different weeks, different months, the more distinct months you're going to hit. That also will be beneficial for your airdrop because you're going to meet different criteria. So now I'm going to do it on Arbitrum and I'm going to bridge it to Celo. And we can also mint one on Arbitrum and bridge it to Optimism. So we've done that. Remember about D-Bridge so you can use it in case you need some Arbitrum funds or different network funds like Optimism or, you know, BNB, whatever you really need. And if you guys found this video useful, follow me on Twitter because this is where I update you with some airdrops. And don't forget to follow my Twitter group because this is where I post some updates about airdrops and ordinals. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.